I'm Nick Hanashevsky. As a professional saltwater fishing journalist, I've explored the world's wildest fishing destinations. Now, I'm bringing you there, into the saltwater underground. New Jersey's offshore wreck fishing is legendary. The coastline harbors harrowing stories and secrets of shipwrecks, mainly sunk from pummeling nor'easter storms, World War II German U-boats, and simply unlucky accidents. But on the destruction of those shipwrecks comes life, as deep-dwelling wreckfish such as black sea bass, blackfish, cod, pollock, porgies, and more colonize the wreck and call it home. We've got reports of nautical seas on the horizon, but I put a salty enough crew together to see what we can find biting on the wrecks. Offshore sea bassing starts with heading to the right tackle shops to pick up the gear needed to ply the deep water shipwrecks. My local connections at Fisherman Supply and Grumpy's Tackle are always dialed in. I'm prepping with some Savage Gear jigs, proper Bubba knives, 2-0 to 5-0 bait holder hooks, and an assortment of bank sinkers from 8 to 12 ounces to start the tackle box off right. Right. Here we are in mid-December. We got about 15 days left of the black sea bass season in New Jersey. And today I'm going to meet up with a whole bunch of old salts, including my uncle Greg, my buddy Sean, and we're going to fish with Captain Al Crudelli on the Bayhound with him and his son Jimmy. And uh, we're going to go target these 20 to 50 mile wrecks today, hopefully get some sea bass, cod, blackfish, ling, porgies even, who knows, whatever's going to be biting on this day. So let's get on deck. Whoa, 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 sorry to break up the conversation yeah. here, yeah? <laughs> What's up, boys? So the general rig we're using out here is a high-low rig that Jimmy Crudelli's tying. You get about 36 inches of line, 40 pound leader, put a nice little squid skirt that's got some mylar flash, put the squid and clam on, and then about another 20 inches down, another dropper loop with a two-aught, three-aught uh, circle hook, and then we're putting our weight on on a little dropper loop at the end here, about eight, nine in ounces today. But this is your general sea bass rig because they're feeding all in the water column from down below, right on the bottom, up to about 10, 15 feet. Drop it down, reel them in. There's some big fish here. Big sea bass. Look at this hog on the jig. <laughs> Look at these killer fish, 150 foot of water on the jigs. Little Shimano jigs here. Just monster, monster knucklehead sea bass. This is exactly what we're looking for. This is why we made the run in these nautical seas. Getting some nautical stuff out here. Already got a couple porgies and bluefish and Sean's already back on. Dumping down for sea bass. Come on, Shawnee. Woo! There we go. This one is uh, probably about, what, three and a half, four pounds? Yeah, about 20 inch fish, probably close to three pounds. That's Next. awesome. And now these Guy fish. This looks really good here. <laughs> no, no problem. And these fish, they start out as females and they turn into males and they get these big old hump heads. That one, This one's about to get that big knucklehead on it. You can see the hump head start. Right yes, sir. She's probably still carrying rope. Probably hasn't switched yet, but. That's a damn fine sea bass. That's it. That's Greg's sea bass. That's, that's going right in the core. <laughs> Some real nice porgies, too. Feels like I got like a 30 pound weight just reeling in on it. Actually, 
putting strain on the rod and wheel. Oh. Ah, it's spitting up your guys' clams. <laughs> Dude, look at this on the jig, flapping around. This thing wallopy. As soon as this thing hits the ground, this jig just absolutely wallops it. Greg's on again. Unbelievable. You can see, you know, fishing 150 foot of water here, the air bladders pop out like that. And uh, luckily, all these fish are keepers today. I mean, they're all monster fish over 13 inches. The first world record that got caught and broke by fish came from here. Okay. This particular record? It's this record. Wow. I'm not here like you would believe. It's a, it's a, it's a plane that they went down Black Friday. They all got sunk. Uh, I forget the exact date, but it was, I think it was 1942. The Derby, uh, two Derby U boats worked in the area. Um, one, one of the commanders actually really, uh, got captured. The submarine was captured. I sent to a concentration camp and came, immigrated back to America after he got sent sent back into the war, came back and, and built a, uh, a condominium, or at the time it was a motel on the beach in, in Strathmere, called the Dolphin Motel. Wow. When you say reel up, how, how high are you Until they start biting. Now don't, don't come up, like, don't come up halfway. Okay. You know, but maybe three fathom, 18 feet or so. Okay. Greg's feeling porgy over here. Are you going with the house theory? Yeah, you got six fathoms off the bottom. That's what he said. Drop it six that, fathoms off the bottom, porgy. let it hang there. That's a porgy. And the porgies yeah. bite above the wreck. Oh yeah, look at them. Be a nice fish here. Another poke chop. And you have one on the bottom, bro. Here, you. <laughs> All right. This is a true poke chop, dude. When they get this big, it's like a true poke chop porgy, man. About three pounds, three and a half, maybe four pounds. This thing's bite, right? Oh my God, that was great. Little rat-a-tat-a-tat. -a -tat. You know, they're in the grunt family, so they're pretty tenacious up here in the Northeast. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Konashevsky is brought to you by at Nick Konashevsky on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba, Shimano, Grumpy's Tackle, and Fisherman Supply. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Konashevsky is brought to you by at Nick Konashevsky on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba, Shimano, Grumpy's Tackle, and Fisherman Supply. So, wow, we're out here like 48, 50 miles, something like that on these yes, wrecks. Sir. So, will we get the sea bass biting first and the porgies come? How does, how does it all come together? It, Porgies are usually first to hover over top of the wreck. They, they tend to see your, your 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 equipment going to the bottom. But sea bass are always fastest to the hook. They're the most aggressive fish. <laughs> most aggressive <laughs> fish on the spot. Right? Yeah, Brian's bending all the time here. Um, <laughs> we, we have a little nautical conditions here. I'm not exactly where I would like to be. This wreck has a lot to offer. The torn piece a little bit to our starboard. But I'm waiting to calm down a little bit. We're actually turning that way. Um, this is one of my pet wrecks, one of my favorite spots. When you're out here, it's not a tidal situation like it is in shore. Out here, you're dealing with actually spin-offs, like, like, like canyon spin-offs, offshore eddies that kind of influence the way you anchor. I anchored here at 300, now I'm sitting 30 degrees. That's the eddy making us walk right on around. 
So we, we didn't even expect this today. It was supposed yeah. to be two foot calm. Yeah. We're in about four to fives well, with northeast blowing 15, 20. Yeah, the Canadian forecast was three to five. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's more than that here, but yeah. and we're halfway. But it's fine. The we're, point, in, we're in a good boat. The point is, we're on these fish right now. We're, we're on these on fish them. and not, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for the faint hearted to try to get squared away and anchored out here. <laughs> He's strong, whatever he is. What do you got? Oh. 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 Dude, there's something. There's some fish. Oh my god. Look at that double header. 80 feet down. Oh. Holy That's moly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Oh, dude, just that thing. Look at that. Oh my god. Look at that. That makes me think that I had something nasty on. Oh, dude, that's. That's what I see around 50 feet. That's not the way to go around here. Look at that. That's a, that's a big blue dog right there. Big blue fish. Did you feel anything hit that or what? No, I thought th I thought it was off for some. That's, that's, that's when you hit it. Yeah. 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 You did take wow. the motor off. I could have a little makeup. Well, we'll let this guy go. Oh, double header. Bring him back this way. Nice sea bass. There you go. And a porgy. That's sweet. Just in time for Christmas, bring the seven fishes dinner here, you know? Yeah, right. That you're going to be cooking up for us, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Pro chef style. Basically hitting everything today. Out here on the wrecks. That white and the red are really good colors when we put the squid skirts on them out here. They just seem to dial that in like you're finding out, right? Uh huh. <laughs> Blue is a pretty good color out here. Another one in the bucket. Look at that. See that? Some porgies galore. I was reeling up super fast, dude. Super fast off the bottom. Big blue. Big blue. Uh, blue dog? <laughs> Can't believe these big blues are out here still. Bubba neck getting a big blue. Wasn't a pilot that time, but take a big blue just to screw around today. Big old five, six pound choppers. See, here's the edge of the left, and there's the fish. This is the low part of the wreck right here. Coming on to it nicely right now. Went back to trying out bait right now. Put a fish with squid and some clam. Immediately got whacked by this like behemoth bowling ball as a sea bass. Feels like. Oh, <laughs> oh, <holy laughs> <laughs> there we go, boys. Look at the mouth on that thing, dude. That's huge. Woo! That's a big old. <laughs> that's a true knucklehead right there, man. How about that, dude? Rough and rolling, bro. That's how it gets done. That's 50 mile wreck Jersey Sea Bass right there. Look at that. Excuse <laughs> me, you ever get tired on hooking sea bass? Never. <laughs> <laughs> he's, gonna get, he's, gonna, he's gonna get tired of flaying them real quick. So, Sean, we've been out here sea bassing a few times, right, with Captain Now, but the one uh, time that was unreal was when you were reeling up that sea bass and that Mako shark hit him. Oh my right? god, that was so big. <laughs> we never even saw it. We just felt the fish disappear. Yeah, yeah. You're reeling it up and halfway up, you go like this, you go, wait a minute, I don't think I'm on that anymore. And then all of a sudden, you start. Pointing again like that, yeah, and your line was going vertical, I guess, and all of a sudden went horizontal. And the 300 pound Mako shark ate his sea bass on the way up, jumping around like that, and you fought it for 15 minutes. It was a rod like this. Right, because it, it, it didn't actually eat the sea bass, the hook actually got caught in the Mako. That's why you were yeah. able to, to fight him for that long. But, see another porgy. We're crushing him over here. His arm's getting tired. I was just checking on this guy. He hasn't caught one in a little while, so. <laughs> Jimmy's fine. I'm putting the end of that. That's the day. Beauty. Nice. Nice, Bass. Anybody's really interested in catching pollen, I am more for some fish around 100 feet occasionally. The best way to jig for pollen is to, is to jig on a lateral. You know, you want your jig going through the water this way and at first to this. A lot of times people say, well, I caught my jig and straight up and down. What happens is pollen hover above the wreck, they see your rig fall and they attack it on the downfall. But if you really want to target them, you should cast away from the wreck and work your, work your jig very quickly and then stop, open the reel, let it fall, 
you, when you've had a fall, cup your spool or hold your hand around the spool so you can feel the hesitation. As the pilot comes up, as he's falling, he'll grab it from underneath. And all you feel is a lightning, like a lightning of your line. It's not like a bite. Sometimes having a teaser in front of your jig is uh, beneficial for pilot fishing too. But then you gotta worry about if you catch two at a time. It's starting to build again here, pay attention. Johnny's coming up. We might have a call. I can't see a thing. You guys are going to box me out here. Double header. Two big boards. Wow. Yeah. Look at that double header. Woo! <laughs> That's a pair. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold that boy up. That thing's huge. Nice. Look at that fish. thing, dude. Woo! Nice Hook chopping, man. Woo! Right the fuck. You got something big on there, dude. Look at that. 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 Look at that thing, Greg. Wheel, wheel. I get that thing in. Oh. <laughs> Look at that over here. Look at this thing. Yeah, in the boat. In the boat. Big old sea bass, man. Look at that thing. <laughs> you want to see the creepiest stuff? They call them sea mouses. That thing's on the bottom of the ocean. 100. 60 foot of water. They're eating these things. They're all hairy on top. Hey, dog what is that? Oh, it could be a cod. The way that you know the dog? Oh. If it's not a dog, that looked like a cod. Uh oh, Skipper's got something big. Hey. Right there, dude. Look at this fish. That is an absolute <laughs> That's the pollock. That's the pollock. That's what I was talking about. Jig above the wreck. Get it That's done. Look at that fish, dude. dude nice fish, dude. <laughs> that Close is awesome. That. I bet you Al's got when they come in school. Yep. Oh, I saw it rock. Yeah. Take that back there. Show him that. Oh. Yeah, drag him back there. Come on, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Look at this pollock, dude. Look at this. This is insane. This is insane. All these big pollock on the wrecks. Look at that. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> I don't think I got the wreck. Look at this. Oh, my God. Biggest one of my life. He's, uh, I, my biggest is probably like 17 feet close to that. Stud. What a fish, brother. What a fish. <laughs> Al's getting oh. it. Jimmy's getting it. The pilot came through like mad. And the sea bass is coming oh. through. This is how it happens here. 48, 50 mile wrecks, man. Dude, that thing just crushed that jig. Epic fishing, baby. Crushing jigs, man. Unbelievable fish. Yeah, watch that. Got Look at this. I would not have fish. I would. That's a trophy but fish right there. If dude. you get him on ice right away, you'll have to go. But... All right, if you get him on ice right away. This is unbelievable, unbelievable. Jimmy. We got like a school of pilots Two came right on. through, right? And yep. what they do is they come through and they're hitting the jigs, bam, bam, bam. You were hooked up. Your father, Al, hooked was up hooked right up. Right after me. One after another. And these fish, they call them Boston bluefish up north in the northeast too. But we get pilots like this. They rip drag. They got big shoulders and they're like bend rods, you know? Yep. They fight like a bluefish and they taste way better. Wow. These things are awesome. I can't believe we, we lucked into a bunch yep. of this school today. Oh, dude. That could have been any book, any more awesome. Yo, <laughs> the Pollock Pound. That's the Pollock Pound right there. <laughs> Look we'll at these bad boys on ice.
So you don't see them every day like that, especially a beautiful pair like them, too. <laughs> Father and son got them done. <laughs> Parabolic, there you go. Looks like uh, what we're gonna do here, Al, is just like uh, pull up anchor and uh, yeah. roll back in shore. I'll tell you what, brother, trust me. Wreckfish today, bro. <laughs> okay, we needed to get him in one place. Too. Unreal, man. Unreal. Yeah, you never see it like this. This episode of Saltwater Underground with Nick Konaszewski is brought to you by at Nick Konaszewski on Instagram, Grundens, Savage Gear, Bubba, Shimano, Grumpy's Tackle, and Fisherman Supply. All right, I got a real treat for us to cook up this sea bass. We're heading to my Uncle Greg's house down here in South Jersey. We already know he's a great fisherman and an incredible old school game warden, but he's chefed all over the world before, like cooking for elk camps and, and fishing camps around the United States. We're going to see what kind of South Jersey down-home cooking he can do with the sea bass. How you doing, right? All right, man. <clears throat> well, finally, these are the sea bass you and I caught and everyone else, so. Right. Thanks, man. Yeah? I got the uh, bluefish happening, too. I smoked that up. All right. Start with that. The old beers. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, get it happening. All right, let's make it happen. Show us what to do. Hey, dude, I got the uh, smoked bluefish that we caught from the trip. Oh, my gosh. Explain so, to me what's going on here. Well, I took the uh, bluefish, the coating of sugar and and uh, salt for like 48 hours and then it's uh, smoked for eight hours um, at about 140 degrees oh my gosh go, brother. oh my gosh look at that that is absolutely mind-bending mm. oh geez dude all the taste that come together just right wow that is unbelievable I never had bluefish like this, man. That is really good. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, you got some cooking to do, so why don't you cook and I'll yep, eat this I gotta bluefish. do the sea bass. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna cut up these uh, sea bass into sections so I can deep fry them. Next thing I'm gonna do is just give them a slight dusting of flour. We're gonna deep fry the fillets, or what are we doing? Yep, um, we're gonna, we took the fillets, got them into um, edible sized portions, and I'm just gonna give them a little dusting of flour. Right. And that bowl there is my batter, which is a beer batter. So how long did you go into the oil? Four minutes. Four minutes into the pan? Mm -hmm. And just so it fries all up nice and neat, and then you take them out? Cook the fish inside and make it crispy on the outside. Sounds delicious. Well, we'll see. <laughs> make it happen. South Jersey fish and chips, huh? Except for the shiitake mushroom. Coleslaw, and this is a tomato, or excuse me, ketchup-based uh, dip. All right, take it away. All right, wow. This is like a, a true treasure. Treasure of the sea, sea <laughs> but treasure of the sea bass, I guess, right? Unbelievable. Wanna go eat this? Yeah, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> As usual.
It worked? Unbelievable. And that curry is killer in there, man. That really, that really snaps at you. You being my dad's brother, <clears throat> used to take me under your wing when my dad was out, you know, working or something like that, and you'd show me fishing and hunting. But then you became a game warden down here, which was unbelievable. I'm like, I equate the game warden in South Jersey as being almost like, you know, <clears throat> a little more prestige and like FBI or CIA agent. And, and uh, you know, you have like, always have like a bullseye on your back down here, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, there is kind of a, I guess I could say it's a, a mythical component to the job. Oh yeah? Um, you could live here in this little town for 30 years and people might start waving to you after the first 25. If you move into a town this size down in South Jersey, it's the game warden. Everybody's gonna know you right off the bat. What? They're gonna know what you drive, what your activities are, are you working today, what your days off. <laughs> and then when you start um, arresting people, they were uh, on this road out here. Right. Um, it was I don't know, 30 feet long, uh, $5,000 reward. It said $5,000 reward whoever shoots the, the uh, new game board. With an arrow pointing right to your front door. <laughs> 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 They, and I they, thought I was a really nice person. <laughs> you are. So, you know, I love the, uh, just the stories down here, man. And like, you know, you put in what, 25, 30 years of game board? 26 years in one month. 26 years in one month. It's a long time down here, man. It never gets old hanging out with my favorite Uncle Greg, you know. Learned so much from you. Gotta wipe your <laughs> As usual. <laughs> Been doing that for 47 years, right? Well, thanks again, Greg. Really appreciate you cooking this, showing us a little bit of your South Jersey lifestyle. Yeah, and I'll see you tomorrow for ice fishing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what you guys talked about. How dedicated are you as an angler or outdoorsman or to whatever passion that drives you? Do you roll over and go back to bed when it's cold out, the seas are too sporty, or you just don't feel up to it? There's always the moments and choices in life that define a day to be forgotten and a day to be remembered. Give me some gnarly seas, Tell me the fish are biting and add a splash of salty characters and I can guarantee that's a day I'll remember for a lifetime. On the front page of the newspaper, everybody started believing that I was this mythical person. I was just, I wasn't that at all. <laughs> There's no truth to it or? Uh, no, well, 